Hey, I'm Luther Kruger, Big Blue Sun Museum, solar cooking based in Minneapolis. I'm Skip Moan, uh, uh, solar cooker here in Tucson, Arizona, interested in all things solar, and this is my first iteration of a solar box solar cooker. And cardboard and a piece of glass, a couple of boxes, some string and some tin foil. And it still got up to 350 degrees. So I was I'm pretty proud of the way this one came out. But then Sun Oven came along and ruined everything. Uh, a friend of mine name was Bob, he was an engineer. And I, we had, I was friends with him at Solar, uh, at the Citizens for Solar. Anyway, he found one in a, uh, found a sun oven in a uh, thrift store. And he brought it to me, it was still in his original box. He said, I'll let you have it for just what I paid for, $25. Well, <laughs> about oh, six, seven years later, he said, you know, I really only paid $5 for it. <laughs> I was not complaining over <laughs> the profit motive. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> How did you learn about solar energy? Going far as back as you can remember, and then specifically solar cooking. I uh, my first conscious foray foray into solar engineering or solar power, if you will, uh, when I was in a nuclear power plant. I was actually a nuclear power plant operator for the wow. military. Uh, they decommissioned the last nuclear power plant so we began prime power production. And it was a bit of a necessity. I was griping about some of the solar collectors out there and the way you actually gather the heat. And I'd seen, you know, like a box collector for just for energy, for hot water or whatever. And I got to looking at it and said, you know, the less mass there is inside the box, where you transmit, you change, transmute, if you will, the sun's energy into heat energy, uh, you, the less mass in the, inside there, the better the conversion is going to be. So I de designed myself uh, in my head, <laughs> darn it, and uh, came up with layering three or four layers of uh, aluminum screen because very little mass and yet. The sun doesn't impinge all the way through and hit the back of the collector, so you don't lose the heat that way. And the next, that same year, they came out and said, you know, this is what we need to do this, so somebody else built it. Sure. And uh, then I built, because we had a military at Fort Carson, we were using a building that had been built for World War I where they kept their cavalry. And one room was always cold. So I had been, by that time, reading quite a bit about it, and I built a passive solar heater using two doors and a old-style four-pane window. So the window was just about as long as the doors, and so it really only involved a couple of side pieces and nailing everything together. And that room was never cold again. Uh, really brought home uh, the power available if we desire to use it. If we, if we can display that commitment to it, it's so much, there is so much of it available. But, in, in my head, the only thing with solar power, solar energy, if you will, is the looking at it and saying, okay, I have to interact with this. I don't want to interact with it. I always want to throw it in the oven with the computer controlling the oven, turn the thing on, I punch a couple of buttons, and I'm done. I walk away, uh, it'll act like a refrigerator all through the day, and at 2.30 in the afternoon it comes on and it cooks my supper, so when I get home at 5.36, it's all ready. So, well, solar isn't quite that far yet, and yes. we aren't that far with it. So that is the drawback, in particular, to cooking, but even if you do hot water that way, there is still some interactions that, that need you need to change the way you are because the solar doesn't change. It's one way. 
So my thing is, I want to show people how this works because they are going to have to input the change themselves. I can't do that for them. But I can show them how easy it is. Yes, I do that. Yeah. yeah. And so tell us about the Solar Pod Lux. Solar Pod Lux started uh, <laughs> 36, 37 years ago. Uh, a group called Citizens for Solar got together, and we, uh, I wasn't here then, but they put together all of the people that belonged, brought whatever heat device, whatever cooking device they brought, they had made beg barred or st stolen, they brought it out and they cooked. And at five o'clock in the afternoon, they would serve whatever is there as a potluck. And they had appreciated if, you know, somebody brought something, obviously cold wasn't the forte, but uh, they always appreciated that. But a lot of people got in the habit of just coming because food tastes, I think, better done in a solar cooker and over the years this has grown into a, uh, a real real thing there were people coming from South America people come from Europe from the Asian from the Asian continent so we had many many people coming and then COVID got us and things are right now pretty much on hiatus because we don't need to be spreading it any more than we have to so uh, Citizens for Solar is uh, alive and well, but not as vibrant as it used to be in the past. Uh, just a whole bunch of people that love using solar energy to cook and uh, sharing that with other people. That's what it's all about. We get, uh, I had seen as many as three or 400 people there for the potluck. And we held it out of Catalina State Park and people have just they would come in, they had the bag, but they'd come in and, and walk around and we'd feed them cookies or whatever. Uh, we actually made a solar pizza oven. And this thing, <laughs> difficult to transport as a matter of fact. Uh, anyway, it was uh, uh, three, just over, just under four feet wide and about seven feet long. At a plug door in the side and you use a pizza peel and you slide the pizza in and inside there was a piece of uh, 3 8 inch steel so that you had the rock effect you know that it was very hot so you let it heat up slide your pizza in and uh, normally you get really good pizza out of it uh, we get pizzas cakes anything that would fit in our side door which is about like this uh, just a wonderful bunch of people getting together, having fun, and enjoying the sun. And that piece of, was that cast iron? Like a big sheet of cast iron? No, or? just a piece of regular mild steel. Oh, steel. Okay. Sure. And it was suspended inside so it didn't lay on the bottom. Sure. We had a, a solar collector on this little uh, 20 watt or so solar uh, panel on the side that turned a fan so it basically was a convection oven and it would blow air underneath the uh, the uh, metal tray the metal uh, platform inside and then it would uh, literally keep the heat much more evenly all the way through it otherwise you'd have hot spots and cold spots just from the air was so stagnant inside that you could actually see on the glass where the swirls of air were, even with the convection oven. Sure. But uh, pretty amazing when you think about it that you can actually make pizza in a solar oven. Yes. But it worked and it worked very well, and a lot of people enjoyed that pizza. It's currently being rebuilt right now. Okay. The one of the gentlemen that was an engineer, he built the large collector down the hill there, and that we'll look at in a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it's a parabolic. It was 12 feet. And that's our nuclear-powered uh, sun oven. Sure. Anyway, uh, he was pulling it down the road one day. As kind of on the side, the police stopped him and said, "What are you doing with this thing?" <laughs> Turns out he had to cut about a foot off one side of the parabolic uh, reflector because it was, well, it was too wide. It was too wide to be pulling on the road. <laughs> that wouldn't reduce the power by too much. No, it no, didn't. It's probably, probably hardly noticeable. Well, this one, uh, again, it was taken out to the uh, uh, Citizen for Solar Potluck and uh, 
typically it would get too hot. Yeah. So you have to have a way to modify that. So he would use a pressure cooker and it sits up in a little basket and you turn a crank for a uh, uh, boat to pull a boat crank. Oh wow, sure. And he cranks it out there and gets it centered in the thing and then he pulls the tongue around to line it uh, side to side and after it's cooked, he just cranks it back in. Right. <laughs> it works pretty well. Sure. Yeah, but well, the nuclear power, uh, the fuel rods are 93 million miles away. But, uh, That's right. Hey, you know, safe, a safe, good safe distance. Yep. <laughs> Little SP30. I've got. I actually put it on this morning in case. Um, well, that's so cool. And I, I mean, this one, I, I mean, it looks a lot like uh, Joe Radabaugh's Heaven's Flames model because uh, he does he does that you know, with the box. And, well, I I stole some of the ideas oh. and I guessed at the angles and. I, I made it so it looked like it should look like. Sure, sure. And uh, otherwise, it, this yeah. two boxes, three boxes actually. Yeah. And the, the middle liner box is actually an insulation. Just tabs. This thing just slides down in. And I came up with a string on it to reinforce the edges. And yeah. but it worked, and it got me to the point where I finally got my sun ovens and. Actually, have three now. Don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> they're going to consider me a nut. <laughs> or they'll, they'll hire the, what do you call them, the second story man to burgle, <laughs> get them from you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, so I, so for the future, for promoting it, what, uh, what, what are your insights into that? What I personally am doing is uh, I go to, I get invited to STEM programs. And the last STEM program we had, for instance, was at FEMA Community College, where I retired after 21 years there. And we had about 800 kids, and the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh, eighth graders. And all the little schools around, all of the private schools and the public schools would have groups come through, and each group would have a teacher with them. And between, uh, Patrick, the president of the uh, Solar Guild, and myself, we would have, each one of the children would get a cookie. A uh, bit of a, a different thing, I always told them, you've got to ask me a question. Didn't specify what, so got lots of, I, I could have a book on the question. Sure. But every once in a while you find a person that is really interested and obviously thinks about their question. These are the kids I'm looking for because they are the ones that are going to internalize it quicker. And yes, everybody that sees it and gets a cook taste one of those cookies understands innately and they walk up and you cook that in there? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and once they start to understand the power of the sun, it becomes it's not something you read in a book, it's not something you see online. It's right there in front of them. It becomes real. And I think that is that is my way of helping people in the future decide that solar power, solar energy is something that we really need to have. And given everything that's going on right now in the world, I think it's even more important. Uh, we are building uh, two solar farms here in this area. Our, my electric trico company is building one of them. and and uh, TEP is working on another one. Uh, I think this is so important uh, that we are actually utilizing this energy. It doesn't just get converted into heat and radiated back into the atmosphere. We're hot enough as it is. Uh, the other forms of, of solar power, and you've got a photovoltaics. Photovoltaics probably are the, are the real Part of the future that we will use because we've got electric cars coming. The solar power with suitable storage devices, and that's kind of the key right now, uh, those are the things that are going to give us uh, power in the future and where we do not have to contaminate the atmosphere. We do it one time to make the panels and then it's done. There is no more uh, gases released into the atmosphere or whatever. But we have to start someplace. Yes. Uh, what we're doing right now is getting us by, but I don't think we're looking at the future enough. Yeah. And uh, 
Whether we have to change to allow for that or not, I don't know. With better storage devices, there'll be less change that we have to endure <laughs> to, uh, to be able to utilize solar power. It's just something we have to do. We cannot go on the way we are. Uh, too much in the, this world, we just, we need a better way to do it. Now. We'll okay. see. Yeah. Well, this is great. We can move on to another cooker. I'll uh, turn off the cameras and start them over. I don't know what you got cooking in there in some pretty fancy cooking where I see too. I'm going to have to get a shot of it. Well, uh, I watch for the sales. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to spend that much money on pots. Happened to come up and I think I paid $50 for it, $55. Sure. It's a cast iron pot and uh, it's fairly dark colored. It's a bit shiny. More shiny than I like, but still, it seems to work great. I've had this cooker for about eight years. Okay. I've got a white one that I've had about 12. And that one I kind of keep uh, because I go to STEM programs and some of them are in the evening, so I keep one relatively pristine sure. so I can take that out. Now you're probably noticing I've got my hat on. Yes. It's a good idea. There's a reason for that, and one of the first questions, or one of the first statements I make to the kids, first of all, when you're doing solar cooking, you always protect yourself. And that's what the hat is for, is to protect the cooker. <laughs> and they, they have to think about that for a second, then all of a sudden the whole thing makes sense, oh, yeah. because if it can cook something in there, it can cook me as well. <laughs> so that's why I wear a hat. Yep. Always protect the cooker. But no, my sun ovens, once I got them, I fell in love with convenience with the, uh, the uh, they're light, I think they're 23 pounds. They fold up, the reflectors all fold up. This is my own personal touch, it's just a vanity thing. <laughs> I'm quite sure it doesn't add any efficiency, but as a matter of fact, I may lose it because I can't reflect from them. Yeah. But still, I just like it because they don't blow around in the wind. Sure. It's true. And uh, always use a heavy pot when you're doing it if you can. Always works better. Always use a dark pot. Uh, the uh, uh, sun ovens have never done wrong by me. No. They're the workhorse. They are. That's what everyone that has one, they've, they've had it forever, they keep it. Yeah. Or they give it to someone who will actually use it. Yeah. But I've been using these uh, 08, 07, 06 about, 05 maybe was when I got my first one, the yeah. green one. Yeah. And I paid $5 for one, and I paid, I uh, bought one from a gentleman down in Green Valley, and I paid $75 for that one mm -hmm. in the original box. Good call. Uh, I traded the green one for a brand new one. And believe it or not, I won one at one of our Citizens for Solar's uh, okay. potlucks. Oh. So I took my fourth sun oven and I gave it to a young lady there who just been, she'd always wanted to get one and she'd never had any money to do it. So I, I packed everything up and then I walked back in carrying it and I set it on her lap and turned around and walked away. That's great. So uh, I know that one is being used. Sure. <laughs> And uh, my wife absolutely loves it because I don't heat the house up. I don't get the whole house dirty and it doesn't, mm -hmm. there are no cooking smells left in the house. And it's just for her, plus I do my cleanup. Yeah. <laughs> so she this is uh, a big plus in that sense. Uh, I can put three of these in my car and all my pots and pans and drive someplace and do a show and uh, we'll have as maybe six or seven of these when we do a uh, uh, STEM program. Sure. And uh, it's a, you've got to have one person just looking out for cookies when you're doing that because yes. <laughs> it gets pretty busy. <laughs> yep. I am partial to the sun oven because of the convenience. Doesn't mean it's the best one out there, it's just for me it tends to work. But standard old box cooker, low tech, but very good efficiency. Uh, what did I see? 450 watts per meter per meter, or per meter squared. Yeah. So it's like having a, a microwave of 450 watts. 
Or you could say I've got 550 watt light bulbs sitting in the bottom of this yeah. box that are on all the time, yeah. and I'm collecting that energy, concentrating it, and using it to cook yeah. food. So you'll beefed up easy bake oven because that's all that. That's was, all right? that is. <laughs> well, they 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 have a 10 or a 20 watt. Yeah. And yeah. that cooks, and I point that out to the kids at the STEM programs, and they say, "What?" <laughs> and the little so the girls say, will say, yes, what? "Oh yeah, that it just has a light bulb in it," and the little boys are going, "Huh? How does that work?" <laughs> So, it's it's pretty amazing what we can do with this energy. Pasteurizing water uh, is a huge thing, not for us, but for other parts of the world. I was since I spent a year and a half in Eritrea, mm. and the water out of the tap wasn't safe to drink. So, what do you do? You've got to have energy to pasteurize it. They carried wood up from Python Valley, which was several thousand feet, like 4,000 feet. They had to carry it up the hill. And see, I said the sun was coming out. <laughs> and uh, they these older ladies would carry it up on the hill on their head and get paid about a dime American a day. And most of the time, the sun is up. I would love to make one of these, uh, and I will end up doing it, setting it on a pedestal. I've got the pedestal behind the little hill over there and sun tracker and the whole nine yards although the sun tracker really is not needed uh, it's only limited by your the imagination of the people doing it and there are some great imaginations out here I mean you take people like Al Nichols and, and these guys that have been doing this for years and years and years it's amazing and it makes me embarrassed that we haven't done more it's that's, and that's always the, the question about the future is how do we get people to adopt it? Let's do it. You know, you're doing it locally. Right. Um, there's a guy in uh, Wisconsin who makes a, one or two cookers at a time. They, they get 350, 400 box cooker and they're, they're like a, a trough in shape mm -hmm. uh, so they can just rock on a, on a piece of a board that's almost the same shape. So it just kind of okay. sells out. I, so I nothing really complicated. One of them or one of your... Yeah, we, we went Tom Hallquist. Yeah, and he, what he does, he calls it the suitcase method where he says, hey, oh, so you're going to Eritrea, you know, you're okay. going to Kenya, can you, you know, uh, pay 50 bucks for extra baggage or whatever, take this along with you, find someone who can use it, yeah. you know, so it's like he doesn't, he doesn't set foot there, they don't have to worry about shipping, you know, 20 or 30 or 50 on a pallet, and when you get there, they're half of them are busted up, or there are all these NGOs that are, are promoting them in countries by the, you know, hundreds or thousands, and, you know, whatever, whatever works for you to get something out there, it's going to have to plant some seeds. My uncle was a uh, missionary in Addis Ababa. Uh, I never did get down to see him because there was still that angst between oh, yeah. Eritrea and Ethiopia. Yeah. And I was in Eritrea at Tegnu Army Station. So, yeah. and they didn't, they frowned a little bit on some of us traveling. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a risk. Yeah, we picked up 25 degrees oh, in that, just, a, just yeah. that little bit of, yeah. of sun there. Yeah, and you can see the clouds are kind of, they're getting, depending on which way they're moving, we got a lot of gaps up there. Mm -hmm. Probably more than enough to bring that right back up. But this will make a wonderful supper for tonight. Yes. Okay, well, should we move on down to the, to the beast? Yes, let's <laughs> go look at the beast. Tell us about the nuclear-powered <laughs> cooker. Uh, this uses a pressure cooker in a box that... The pressure cooker sits in this. This hooks up in the hook up there. We are then able to pull it out to where the focal point is, and the side to side is determined by the orientation of the entire cooker. So we would literally pick up the end of the cooker and turn it to align the side to side for the most efficiency. And uh, this will cook as fast or faster than a stove. 
because of the of the area, uh, you know, 450 watts. If you figure for two meters squared, this is quite a bit bigger than that. So uh, the light is quite intense that comes off it. As a matter of fact, the military uses to set up similar with mirrors concentrating it in, and they use it to test the effectiveness of armor. They literally focus it on a tank or whatever, and but it's not one of these. It's it's a whole series of them. And 2,000 degrees instantaneously. Uh, we don't really have a lot to stand up to that. So. And this is a 12 foot, you say? It's, it started as a 12 foot. It's 11 something now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and these are these are just aluminum sheets that are then are they populated or epoxy or? No, these are glued in. Glued in. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they were just uh, cut to fit. Uh, I don't know how he bent them because you can't bend these things easily. But uh, he glued them all in place, and they've stayed. So, sure. and with something this big, the efficiency is not quite as uh, necessary because it's so powerful. It's going to overcome any potential loss of efficiency that there would be. But I'm guessing that's why the triangle shape, because that's a little they're a little easier to curve where you need them to curve. Right. And uh, they're not so big that they don't end up with, you know, a start of a curve and then uh, bubbling up. So right. So. Well, and this is a this is a trailer that's uh, befitting the size of the, the cooker. That's for sure. It's about the same size as my trailer for the for the uh, villager. Okay. Uh, yeah. A 15 footer maybe just in that range. Um, so many people are so amazed at what these things can do. When I was in the military, I was, my initial job was Army Security Agency, but then I became, I went and I got out for a six year break in service and went back in and went into the Army Nuclear Power Program. And the only difference between a nuclear power plant and a steam power plant is the heat source. Once you get that through your head that the heat source is the difference, all power plants are basically the same. Someplace there is that heat source. Yeah. Whether it's a diesel engine and it's the fire in the cylinder, whether it's the uh, nuclear energy or your a big uh, coal-fired burner or whatever it is, it's a heat source. And once you can use that, everything else becomes, it's everything as an ancillary to that, so. Yeah. So how often do you suppose you've had this uh, rolled out? It hasn't been rolled out for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have not, there have been very few gatherings of people where we could actually go and demonstrate this, where, where it would make sense to have it. Yeah. That being said, I'm anticipating this fall, we're going to have uh, probably quite a few uh, different uh, venues because people are at the point where they want to get out and do something. Yes. And they're getting stir it's going to happen. <laughs> You're right. They're getting stir crazy. Yeah. Uh, you can you can see it from all of the things going on around the world. Sure. And uh, like you said, you can probably fit most of your front oven right in here. Yep. Yeah, pour it in there. Yeah, that's still continuous. Actually, I can put all three sun ovens and all my pots and pans in the back of my car. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, safer there. <laughs> I figured out how to put it in. I found some ice bags. Yeah. Uh, they're used to transport ice to boats and things. Sure. So they got the canvas straps around the bottom, very tough little bags and uh, big enough that I can carry things with. So but I've been uh, using them. Yeah. So now they look at it with a concrete block and then uh, we have to get you up to a pretty good speed to get Takeoff velocity. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a reason for the concrete blocks, yeah. and that's because when he built it, if he had moved the whole thing back just a little bit, yeah. the front end was too heavy to move around easily. So he added the ballast back here, and now it's probably 50 pounds on the front end, and it's very simple to, to pick it up and move it to do the side to side aiming. Sure. Okay. Okay. So any. Keep cooking. Keep cooking. Keep cooking. I mean, it, it's 
call out here. Uh, I'm not going to say it depends on you, but it depends on people like you. And if you desire to get into it and do it, you will not be displeased with the results of your solar picking. Lorraine, thanks so much. Very welcome. I'm glad I could be here for you.